In this next video, I want to show you how to set up validations within the Nitro form. So in some cases, you might need to validate that there's an email address being entered into the form, or you might need to verify that there's information being added to that field in, with certain conditions. And I'll show you a couple of those options. So when you select your column, and I'm going to use the alternate email column for this demo, you'll see that there's the permissions option, which we talked about in a previous video. And then there's also a validations option. So this validations option uh, allows you to set up a validation to say that this column requires an email format. So let's go ahead and create a validation name and we'll call it require email. We're going to use a pattern and we have some predefined patterns here for email, phone, and uh, number. You can set up your own custom column validations using this validation value field. And you can see that you can use uh, column internal names or placeholders to determine that uh, custom pattern. But in this case, we're going to choose email. We're going to enter our own error message to say, uh, please enter a valid email address. We're going to do this permission for everyone, and we're going to do it for all, well, you know, no condition. So it's going to be in all forms at all times. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. We're going to apply. And now, uh, before I refresh this, I do want to show you, I can go to, oh, I can enter my email address, I can hit save, and because those validations were not added to that form at that time, it showed, it did go through. Uh, I'm going to save my changes. I'm going to copy that URL. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I publish my changes. Now I'm going to go back to my new form, Nitro form, and you'll see now if I click, if I enter that same value and try to save it, it's going to ask me to enter a valid email address. So if I then enter the at symbol, it's going to t accept that and the form will save. Now the next thing you might want to try to do is have a form uh, not be submitted until the say description field is filled out. So we set a validation on our description field, and we're going to say that when category equals uh, internet, for instance, the description field has to be filled out. So we're going to add our validation and say description must be filled out when cat equals internet, just so we know which one we're talking about. We're going to do a, val uh, a length, uh, should be equal to or um, greater than, I should say, zero. And we're going to enter our own error message here. Uh, and we're, we're going to leave it, we're going to add a condition where we can say category equals internet. And we're going to hit OK. Now we're going to apply that. And we'll go ahead and publish it. You'll see that if we go to our form, copy this URL. If we go to a new form, we don't have to enter th anything in descriptions. There's actually no required fields. I can go ahead and save this, no problem. But if I want to set the category as internet, I'm now going to get an error message that says description must be filled out. So this is useful for a number of scenarios uh, when you're trying to dynamically validate that a field contains information or has to contain a certain pattern of information. Uh, if you have any questions, you can refer to our manual for other types of validation options within the form itself. Thank you.